Coming up, we'll get on the court and behind the scenes with the BU men's basketball team. See what a day in the life of a women's lacrosse player looks and sounds like. Athletic director Drew Marichello talks with hockey legacies, Scott Shaughnessy and his daughter, Julia. And it's that time again, men's hockey chases their 31st Beanpot Championship. All that and more next on BU Terriers Unleashed. Kick out for Jonas Harper's three. No timeouts, BU down by three. Morales! The other end, a block for Garrett Pascoe. McCoy in transition. Off target and White, perfectly timed. Final seconds of regulation. They go into the two. The BU men's basketball team entered the 2021-22 campaign as one of the favorites to win the Patriot League. Deep into their season, the Terriers have met those expectations as they continue their push to the playoffs with a matchup against Holy Cross. But head coach Joe Jones knows there are no easy wins in this league. This will be a competitive game. We need this. You understand? Let's go get it. Attitude. One, two, three. Attitude. Let's go get it. Hey, hey, hey. You're playing against a tough opponent. You're playing against a tough team. Everyone's trying to win. They have good players. They have a good coach. We knew it was going to be a dogfight. It'd be an arrival. We just got to be ready. Hey, here we go. They were hot. They had two wins in a row. They beat a couple of good teams. Pace! Pace! Hey! Hey! hey. Now Matone is inside position, muscling under the basket, Chippy is there. Against Gates, doesn't realize the time, or does he? Oh my goodness, that was beautiful! Now can Holy Cross claim the lead. And it's Luke down the lane! Beautiful finish, Joe Jones needs a timeout! No penetration! The only way they scored is off the dribble right now! The game plan was to keep them out the paint. We knew they were going to drive the ball. We can draw up the X's and O's, but at the end of the day, we got to come together and say, all right, we're going to stop this guy from getting in the lane. In the end, the Terriers didn't get the execution they need in this game, and Holy Cross takes it. But it's a teachable moment, an important lesson for this BU team to learn as they look to get to the next level. That element of, of teaching the young guys uh, what winning is all about and what, what it takes to win, those are the best lessons for, for young guys to learn. You, know, you got to come prepared, ready every day to win a championship, not just win one game. Every day, every practice is, is preparing for that. After their tough loss to Holy Cross, the Terriers right the ship and rattle off four wins in a row, including the rematch with Holy Cross in Worcester. Now, it's on to the Patriot League Tournament, where it will all be on the line for this veteran team. It's there, you know, it's there for the taking. You know, you have talent, um, we have experience, and now we just have to put it all together. And then you look back and say, wow, that was a little bit of a bumpy road, but look where, look where we got to. This team is learning how to work through some of those things and, and come together, um, and we're coming together at the right time. At the end of the day, it's not for the team, you're doing it for each other. Look to the left and look to the right, you got, you got your brothers next to you and you want to go out and, and play hard. You know, diving on that loose ball, I'm doing it for my, not only my coaches, but I'm doing it for my team, I'm doing it for each other. Like, this is what making winning plays and those hard things are extremely hard and difficult. It makes it easier when, you, when you're doing it for people that you love and care about. Javante McCoy with the step through. Matone 
Muscling up inside and hits the hook shot. We don't have a bad apple. You know, there's not one guy on the team that um, you wouldn't like to be around. You know, it's kind of cool to talk to the other student athletes and hear them talk about your guys and, and what great guys they are. And it's, it's pretty cool to have that kind of environment around our team. Up next, we get the scoop on how the women's lacrosse team is preparing for the upcoming season. We'll be back with The Draw right after this fast break. There are many things that go into being a successful Division I college athlete, both on and off the field. For a closer look at what that involves, the women's lacrosse team agreed to take a camera and take us behind the scenes as they prepare for their upcoming spring season. Hi everyone, um, Emma Pfaff, I'm a senior on the women's lacrosse team. And I'm Quinn Ferry, I'm a sophomore on the women's lacrosse team. Me and Emma Pfaff, Emma, get in on this. Okay. Emma! My girl Emma, we're gonna take you through our days as BU women's lacrosse players. Exactly a week out from our first game against Vermont. Woo! Go dogs! Let's go! Maggie, what is your favorite part about being a BU athlete? Easy, being able to practice every single day. Awesome. Yeah, partner stretching! Woo! Ahead of the camera! Woo! Maggie getting a good stretching. Hi! Game face. Mm. Yeah! <laughs> Quinn, what is your favorite thing about being a BU athlete? Um, I love that our field, Nickerson Field, is like right in the middle of the city. We have our own little like college vibe, and I love it. Another beautiful day on the Nick. Maggie, say hi to the camera. Any day to just practice on the Nick, it's, it's just practice, man. <laughs> you can't get enough of it. It's our fearless leader. Yeah. More, more, more in the flesh. Introduce Max. Max. Max, you're on the vlog. He's our film guy, our manager, all of the above, really. Yep. Y'all want to see something special? Yeah, yeah what? I love being out here. Awesome. <laughs> Cheers. Pre-practice warm-up. Let's go. <laughs> Beautiful day on the net. Let's go. Outside. Tell me how you feel about playing trash can ball today. Oh my god, that's my favorite drill. Let's go, Red! Come on, come on, grab ball, grab ball! Ruthless! Who has the ball? <laughs> come on, Red! Come on, Red! It looks like Kaylin has it. The ball has been exited. <laughs> Let me tell you, we hopped out of here. We put our shoes on. We got right to work. We did some passing, yeah. some five v fours. We're ready to go. Gave all of our effort. Yeah. Go dogs. Go dogs. We're headed up to lift. We love to touch our Jen Berry before we head in. Let's make sure it's a good lift. It's punch time! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Guys, we're um, at the dining hall getting some fuel before class. What do we have? 
sandwich, salad. What do you have to eat? Chicken and rice, a little salad over here. Nice. Hummus and veggies. Emma, what about you? Sandwich, a little bit of chips, some rice, green peppers. Look who just joined us at the dining hall. Freshman Avery Jones. Avery, question for you. What is your go-to lunch? I really like the sandwich station. I like to mm -hmm. make my own sandwich. Yeah. It really refuels my body. Right. It's great. Good answer. Thanks for joining us. For dessert, we have cereal. <laughs> <laughs> Quinn, Riley, and Kaylin here. We're at study hall, our favorite place. This is where we like to come in groups and really just get our grind on. What are you working on right now, Kay? I am working on organic chemistry. Wow. I have a exam on Thursday, so get ready for that. I'm also working on chemistry, but I don't have a quiz or a test on Thursday, so I'm chilling. I am just working on some entrepreneurship for one of my classroom classes. It's quite obvious that lots of hard work, dedication, and personal sacrifice are required to play a Division I lacrosse schedule. But as their new season commences, Coach Morton and the Terriers are ready to rock. Kendall, what are we most excited for about season? I think I'm most excited to travel to new schools and play all the teams that we didn't get to play last year. All right, Vic, what are we most excited for about season? I think I am most excited to stay in the hotel. Nice, a little travel, okay. Yeah. I love it. Jen, what is your favorite thing about being a BU athlete? My favorite thing about being a BU athlete are the people. You know, you make these friends that you have on the field and off the field for the rest of your life. Coming up, Athletic Director Drew Marichello sits down with a family of Terriers who are continuing the historic legacy of BU hockey. Boston University has a long history of athletic legacies where the sons or daughters of former Terrier athletes follow in their parents' footsteps and attend the university. Athletic Director Drew Marichello sat down with former BU and NHL player Scott Shaughnessy, class of 1987, and his daughter Julia, currently a sophomore, playing defense for the women's hockey team. Scott, you were a highly sought after recruit coming out of St. John's Prep. What ultimately led you to come to Boston University? In 71 and 72, they, the BU had won back-to-back -back national championships and then I was like 12, 13, 14, and they won in 76 and 77 and then 78 national championship. Two years later, I'm a freshman in high school, the U.S. wins the gold medal in the 1980 Olympics. And the only four guys from the East that are on the team are BU guys and it's, it's just kept dawning on me that this BU program is pretty good. Now Sanders flips it back to the point to Shaughnessy, moving in, Shaughnessy out in front, shot, score! Scott Shaughnessy! So both of your parents went to BU, both of them were accomplished athletes, and your sister goes to Dartmouth. Was there any pressure on you to make an appearance on Com App? <laughs> um, I think at the beginning of the recruiting process, like, there's no pressure at all, obviously, and I think my dad and my mom both the whole time were kind of like, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. I think when I told him that I was pretty interested in BU, it was an exciting day for both my mom and my dad. Friars can't clear it. Shaughnessy the shot and scores! Julia Shaughnessy with her second goal of the afternoon. What do you do as an athletic department to make BU attractive to, to a, a potential student athlete? One of the things that I say to recruits when they come here and say to parents is that what you see is what you get. We certainly uh, sell the academics, the world-class academics. As a student athlete, you're gonna live it every day and it's gonna pay off for you as well. We basically talk about the experience that you're gonna have athletically. We talk about the social aspect of it. We talk about the, the academic component and the rewards that you're gonna have with a BU degree. And in 2019, the Terriers are queens of the ice here in Boston. Let's go back to 2020, your freshman year. Uh, we didn't play anything from the middle of March until December. What was that like to set foot on the ice finally and to carry on the Shaughnessy legacy? It was very cool, obviously. Um, I didn't really believe it until I stepped in the ice just because everything was kind of up in the air and things had been canceled and stuff. So I didn't really get to like 
understand the moment that was happening until it was happening. Shaughnessy from the high slot scores! I think both of them were obviously it was a super proud moment and it was also something that like I was proud to do as well for my dad and for my mom. To finally put the jersey on and actually do it yourself is crazy and it's awesome. What was it like for you to see that? To go and be at Walter Brown, the same arena I played in. She's coming out of the same locker room, going up the same ramp. Those are the uniforms we wore. It was just surreal. Number four, Scott Shaughnessy. You didn't see your dad play in college, obviously, but you've <laughs> seen some uh, some film. I won't say old film, but some video. What are your old impressions? <laughs> what are your impressions, and what did you maybe take uh, from his game that you modeled your own game after? Well. <laughs> Definitely growing up, I heard a lot about the style of play. Goon was probably a word that was used very often when describing him. Obviously, he was very offensive, and um, that's something that I've always played with, is like offensive confidence, I guess I would say. But I definitely bring a lot of physicality, I would say, and that's something that he taught me, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. So there's a shot and a score by Shaughnessy. Tell us a little bit about how your experience has been different this year than it was last year. We're still going through these protocols. I think a huge aspect from the hockey perspective is like just the sense of community is a lot closer now. That connection with your teammates makes hockey a lot different just because you know each other and obviously it makes your team connection a lot stronger and play better and everything surrounding that. Um, also, I think with school, just having in-person classes is such a different experience it feels a lot more like a college campus and together and united than it did last year you joined the athletic department at bu i think right around the same time as the women's hockey team started up i can't remember it was right before or right after Five. but right and uh, what's been your impression of the the women's hockey program here so far it's been what we thought it was going to be uh, I, I i was here for the 2005 the inaugural uh, launch if you will remember vividly the first uh, the first game, we're able to establish a, a good recruiting pipeline uh, early on uh, to, to really build on the on the BU legacy, the BU brand, uh, if you will, and we've been a consistent program since 2005. So if you had to choose, I know there's a lot obviously, but what would be one of your favorite women's hockey moments that you've experienced or gotten to see? I think it's an easy default to say that we've been to a couple of frozen fours and those were unbelievable accomplishments, but I'm going to go back and say the 2015 Hockey East Championship, which I believe is our fourth in a row. We won it down at Hyannis and, and, and beat BC. What I remember uh, most is Marie-Philippe Poulin, who is the best player in the world, in my mind. Um, she was the best player on the ice that day. Right out in front, Poulin, score! And when she didn't win the Kazmaier, uh, I remember saying I wish that the people who actually voted for the award saw some games yeah. <laughs> uh, because she was just, you know, she was so great and she still is great, a two-time captain of uh, Canada's Olympic team. And the bean pot that we won uh, at Harvard in 2019, Sammy Davis with an overtime winner. Conference shoots, Davis scores! And the Terriers will lift the bean pot trophy! That was a pretty special victory. Bean pot Hall of Famer now. Exactly. Yeah, it's great. Stay right here. After this short timeout, we'll show you how the bean pot made its way back to its rightful place. It's the first Monday in February, and if you're a hockey fan in Boston, that can only mean one thing, the Bean Pot. BU takes the ice against Harvard in game one, looking for their first championship since 2015, and they debut some sharp throwbacks, bringing back their iconic Terrier jersey from the 70s and 80s. The BU captain gets things started on a positive note. Here's Cockrell coming in with some speed. Logan Cockrell to the back, and he scores! Logan Cockrell gets the Boston University Terriers on the board first. Taking
Taking it on the right, drifting into the circle. He shoots, he scores! Power play goal! And Boston University is back on top! He gets it to Brown. Brown shoots and he scores! Two power plays, two power play goals, and a two-goal lead for the Terriers. Kept in at the point here. Shot from Gallagher, he shoots, and it finds its way to the net. And a four to one lead. And that's good enough for Boston University as the Terriers are headed back to the Bean Pot Championship game. So it's on to the finals. Boston University against three-time reigning Beanpot champs Northeastern at a rockin' TD Garden. The primary goaltenders for both squads are at the Olympics, so it'll be a battle of the backups. TJ Semptenfelter for the Huskies and sophomore Vinny Duplessis for the Terriers. Carried in by McCarthy, centering pass. Phillips on his own rebound and it goes wide. Novak going in. Backhander kicked aside by Duplessis. Huskies have it here. Centering pass kicked aside. Plenty of chances at both ends, but it remains scoreless after two periods. This game and the 69th Beanpot champion will be determined in the third period. One here, two on one developing as Armstrong gets it to Peterson. He scores! Remaining. Sophomore Dylan Peterson's huge goal gives BU the one nothing lead late in the game, and the Terriers hang on to earn the 31st Beanpot Championship in team history. And it's over! The Terriers are top dogs of the Beanpot again with a one nothing win over the Huskies. The Steve Nazro, most valuable player, Dylan Peterson! And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the presentation of the Beanpot, they've won and lead all schools with 31 total titles. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the Beanpot once again heads back to West Campus and again it's Arena. Boston University is your Beanpot champion. We're out of time, but we'll be back with more action-packed stories on the next exciting episode of BU Terriers Unleashed. <laughs>